And Ma, let me ask you a question. What's your favorite movie with a wrestler in it? Oh, forget that. Never mind that. Here's a better question. What do you think is scarier? The fact that Ready to Rumble was actually made? Yeah. Or Charlotte's lopsided titties? Oh, Mom. It's time for... Another wrestling podcast. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to episode 159. I'm Credo. I'm a tired minority Mike. And I am a truly awesome, perfect, focused angry cooter. And you're listening to another wrestling podcast. That's right, guys. Each and every week, check us out, anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. But joining us today... From the Samoan Dynasty, we have the Tunga Kid, Sam Fatu. Uh, you guys probably know him. He started that 80s movie, Body Slam. Uh, he's also the real-life brother of Rikishi, and he's related to all the other Samoans out there. So I'm sure you guys know who he is. Cooter, Mike, what do, what do you think about the Tunga Kid stopping by today? Uh, uh, thanks, TSSPromotions.com, for, uh, for uh, the Tunga Kid. It's no BS. It's ESS. I got to thank Eric Sims. He's always getting his great guests. Really looking forward to hearing what the Tonga kids got to say. I mean, the Samoan dynasty is just amazing. We just get so many classic wrestlers out of that family. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I remember seeing him in the movie Body Slam when I was a little kid growing up. I used to watch that movie like five times a day when I was a kid. <laughs> so that, other than that, uh, can't wait to see what he has to say. I wonder if he's uh, related to The Rock. Like everybody else is. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. Alleged, allegedly, all Samoans are related except for Samoa Joe. He's the only Samoan <laughs> in the WWE family that's not related to all the other Samoans. Stick around. Make sure you head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. Like us, follow us, subscribe, and uh, check out all the other shows. But guys, you know, movies, you just said it right there, Body Slam. Did you guys happen to catch Guardians of the Galaxy yet? Batista. Starring in the sequel of Guardians of the Galaxy, wrestlers to movies. This is this is what it's all about nowadays, right? You know what's crazy is that movie has such a great cast, and Dave Bautista is not exactly like an A-list celebrity, but he steals the show in that movie. I don't care what anybody <laughs> tells you. At least for me, the the lines that he has, it's like that part was made for him. <laughs> I mean, because it requires you to be, and I don't want to say Bautista's a bad actor, but it requires you to kind of like look like a bad actor yeah. you know what i mean because you're just a dumb idiot and like that's what drax is he's just a neanderthal and it's perfect for him and he pulls it off so well man he really does an excellent job yeah, i listened to uh talk his jericho with batista on it and i know there's one thing that was spoiled on that and he talked about he had sensitive nipples <laughs> <laughs> oh just wait there's so a lot great. more <laughs> so i i can't wait well, wait yeah, well, you know, bringing up Batista, though, in the movies, I mean, guys, if you think about it, I mean, back in the day, I think Hogan was kind of like that first wrestler to kind of make it big, you know, uh, Suburban Commando, No Holds Barred, you know, big in the movies. And, you know, I, I didn't think anybody would ever surpass him, but slowly oh, God, but surely. You saw that making it big? Well, you know, back in the 80s, that was pretty big. I mean, it was <laughs> Christopher Command Lloyd, and then, you know, but you, you, you know what I mean. But, I mean, slowly yeah. but surely, the, the rock kind of snuck his way into the movies, uh, you know, started off with a little role, a few roles here and there, then kind of went to mega, you know, mega star pretty much, and pretty much has surpassed Hogan at anything he's ever done as being a, a movie star. Uh, you know, you know, even like John Cena now, he's kind of working his way in too, slowly but surely. He's been doing some cameos. Now he's like in a movie coming out this week, The Wall. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's funny, and I want to bring this up because... You know, just a few years ago, we had the we had seen a shooting on the Rock about how he's never here, how he's in Hollywood, and lo and behold, look at what happened to Cena just a few years later, doing the same oh, exact thing. You know what's funny about the Rock too is, I mean, y you could say he surpassed Hogan after his first movie. I mean, The Scorpion King was was a big movie. I mean, it was it was pretty popular, got uh, pretty decent reviews. But he had that lull right afterwards where he was just doing a whole bunch of, of kid movies. And, I mean, yeah, granted, you're making that fuck money. <laughs> but, I mean, that's not much of a legacy. And lo and behold, now he's, like, probably the highest paid action star in all of Hollywood. I mean, my oh my, what, what, what a little boy who played for the Miami Hurricanes has become, you know? So, okay, we had... We had Batista, we have The Rock, Hogan, Cena now. 
Do you guys see anybody else maybe in the current landscape? And it doesn't matter where. WWE throughout the indies. Who, who could be the next big movie star we get out of wrestling, you think, down the line in a few years? Oh, I'll throw Cody Rhodes' name out there because he has been on a uh, season of Arrow. Uh, just made uh, his comeback back in, in this week's episode. And he just does such a great job as a villain. I mean, he, he's a natural great heel right now on the indies, but on TV, he's got personality, he's got the look, and he, he's a pretty halfway decent actor. So I'll throw his name in the hat. You guys didn't think Seamus was great in Ninja Turtles? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And, I mean, besides Cena, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody right now has that that it factor to be in the movies just yet i mean in a year or two i might change my mind and pick somebody i, I just i don't know man just no lo- roman looking reigns at them right now no, uh, no, no. no i don't see roman reigns he can't even talk so why would they <laughs> give him a script well, what about go. the miz i mean listen I've, I've never really watched any of the marine movies but he gets pretty decent reviews i mean for the movie that he's in i mean he's no. uh, apparently he's not a bad actor He's not a bad actor, but his movies aren't. They're, they're, they're not with the right powerhouse behind it. He's right. just made for DVD movies. It's I don't. I mean, I watched one of the Mrs. Marine movies, and I didn't even get through it. That's how bad they were. And then I, I refused to watch the rest of them. Um, he could be. Uh, a, a good actor if he gets if he tries to distance himself himself from the marine franchise i mean look what john cena did he got away from the marine franchise and he's actually doing pretty well the miz just has to separate himself for that which he won't because he's making good money off of it to make these horrible movies yeah. so i can't hate on it yeah. i don't think it was all that great though yeah well I, I, you know we got this good movie talk going i i think you know stay tuned because i think we should talk about some of the the movies uh, that kind of surrounded pro wrestling growing up. You know, I mentioned No Holds Barred, Suburban Commando. There's a lot of other movies, so stay tuned for that one. If you're listening right now, tweet us at a wrestling pod, uh, Facebook us another wrestling podcast. Uh, just go to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. Let us know what were some of your favorite movies involving pro wrestling, and uh, I think uh, what a perfect segue to introduce the Tunga Kid star of Body Slam and uh, part of the Samoan Dynasty joining us right now. Joining us today, straight out of the Samoan Dynasty, we have Sam Fatu, better known as the Tonga Kid. Thanks for joining us today. How's everything going out there? Oh, the West Coast is beautiful. What's up, New York City? (laughs) New Jersey. (laughs) <laughs> now, for everybody listening, uh, you're going to be uh, appearing with ESS Promotions at the Legends of the Ring convention on June 10th and at Pro Wrestling World on June 11th. Uh, for more information, please head on over to ESSpromotions.com. But are you excited to head on over to the East Coast to meet some of your fans? You know what? It's been a long time since I've been there, but I want to knock this out and say this to all the wrestling fans throughout the East Coast and New York, New York and Everywhere else in the West and the East Coast, I wanted to say thank you so much for supporting me over the over the time that I've been there. Madison Square Garden will always be my heart. You know, that's what made me who I am today. And also, uh, a lot of the wrestlers that are out there today, too. I want to thank them, too. Yeah, I'm very excited to come back out there. You know, that's my home. That's like my second home there, you know, the East Coast. And, you know, you guys are just booming out there, too. Your radio station, I got to give it up, man. I can hear you guys from out here, too. I got satellites now, you know? (laughs) That's right. Back then, we didn't have cell phones and stuff like that. But I'd be peeping you guys out, too. Yeah, I'm excited to see my family, my brothers, my uncles. You know, the Samoan Dynasty has been around for a very, very long time, you know? Mm -hmm. Almost like the Hart Foundations and the Barnerics and... You know, just a lot of lot of them, you know. Sure. But, yeah, I'm very excited to, to come out there and looking forward to meeting all my fans. Not only did I have fans out there, I have a lot of good friends that I've met over the years since I uh, joined this business. You know, met a lot of good, all my Puerto Rican friends, my <laughs> black brothers, especially a lot of them are up in the big house, too, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to, to seeing all of them, too. And. I want to shout out to all my Samoan brothers and sisters out there in the East Coast. My Lord at eight, my Lord say four. Well, that's Tonga and someone. Mix it all together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also my boy, King Tonga. How you doing, brother? 
<laughs> my man Haku, I'm excited to see him too. You come from a huge wrestling family, possibly the biggest wrestling family around, uh, with such names as yourself, Rikishi, Roman Reigns, the Head Shrinkers, the Usos, Yokozuna, the Rock, uh, the list goes on and on and on. But uh, tell me, what was it like to be at a family reunion back in the day with you guys? I mean, you got you guys got the name of names of uh, wrestlers in that family. Family reunion, man. We don't play when it comes to that, man. We eat anything and everything. <laughs> 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 now, so this is going to be like a family reunion for me. You know, we have a lot of them. There's a couple of them that's not going to be there, you know, uh, with our Samoan reunion, I can say, because I'm excited to see, like I said, my uncles and my cousins and my brother, you know, but we lost a lot of them, you know, oh, yeah. in this business too. You know, we lost my brother Humanga there. And then we also lost Matt, Rosie, Matt on Hawaii, yeah. uh, Yokozuna, you know, so we just got to be careful. We got to all look after each other, protect each other in this business. These are my main three points that I want to put out there is we got to very be careful and take good care of ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. every time I see a friend, a loved one or family, I always tell them, I want to see you again. You know what that means, right? I want to see you again, meaning I want to see mm-hmm. you forever. Oh, yeah. So that's the catch there, you know, and I, like I said before, you know, it's very important that we all try to, you know, what's a phone call away? And sure. When we have family reunion, our family is nothing. We come from a lovable family, respectable family, and not only that, our mom and our dad, we have the greatest parents in the world. You know, it all starts from them, you know? Sure. We have but- a pastor uh, from San Francisco. I had a grandfather. He was the pastor of a church in San Francisco, California. I also had a grandmother. So, you know, we come from a real strong Christian family, you know? Sure, yeah. Now, uh, growing so, up in such a big family that's in the wrestling business, was it always uh, inevitable that you would become a pro wrestler one day, or did you ever want to do anything else before wrestling? Actually, I wanted to be a football player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wanted to be a football player, but that didn't work out because, you know, football is you basically have to – it's a lot of work. You got college, you got uh, high school. You, you got to go through a lot of steps. In that case, I didn't make it there, but I was a trouble kid anyway. I grew up from the hood, from Sunnydale. I call it the swamp. So I grew up from a, a, a poor family, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was up to me. It was my choice that I was getting in so much trouble, hanging around the wrong kids, the wrong crew. And uh, I just got into a lot of trouble when my mom just got tired of it and called Appa and Sita up and told them, hey, those are her brothers. So I was really scared of those guys. You know, I, actually, I take that back. Scared wasn't the word. I was feared from those two, you know. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes we need that. We need people like that in our life to put us in line, you know. Oh, yeah. yep. But I'm thankful that I'm thankful that those two put me in check, you know. <laughs> and this is where I'm at today. Is if it wasn't for Alpha and Chica, I wouldn't become a pro wrestler or, or where I'm at right now. I'm not telling you why. I'd probably be locked up in the big house, you know, with a lot of my other Samoan Usos up in there, you know? Sure, yeah. Now, now yeah. Uh, speaking of that, though, you, you got your start in 83. Uh, the WWE was a, a different monster back then uh, compared to what it is to today. But could you take us back briefly of the, how you got that call to wrestle uh, for the WWE? Well, I was at a show, and I think it was uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, right? And I was there at the show with Alpha and Chica and a lot of other guys. So one of the guys didn't show up. I think it was Salvador Belomo. And we would always go there early to the shows. And my uncle Alpha and Chica and Big John Studd and Andre the Giant and, you know, just a lot of other names that were there, too, you know. Mm -hmm. They know who they are when I'm saying this because I turned 17, so we would go there early and they would train me in the ring. I would roll around in the ring. So I got somebody didn't show up. So Pat Patterson goes in the back and tells the Samoans, Alpen Sika, do I know how to wrestle? Right? And then they uh-huh. said, yes. Now, I didn't know all this, you know? They said, yes, he knows how to wrestle. Now, knowing <laughs> well, I was only two or three months into the game. I was just pulling around in the ring. Sure. So basically, they threw me into the ring and said, hey, you're going to wrestle this. He's Puerto Rican. He's from New York City. I think his name was Johnny Roz. Yeah. Yeah, I think his name was Johnny Roz. He has a school out there in Brooklyn, New York, or something like that. Yep, yep. So, um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, but, if you know, if I am, then correct me. But I remember that match, and I'll never forget my first match. You know, it's like getting married, you know. When you get married, you never forget your first wife, right? <laughs> well, I, I know some guys do, but I know I didn't. You know, I'm still the sure. same lady for 31 years, you know. God bless you. 
but yeah, that that's the that was my my that's how I started in this business is Springfield, Massachusetts, and they threw me into the ring and they say, hey, just do what you've been doing when we come to the show early. Because back then, we didn't fly everywhere. We drove a lot. Yeah. Back now, in now, New York, you know. Sure, yeah. No, but now, uh, what was I say too? Uh, one of your biggest uh, feuds was with uh, Roddy Piper because uh, you were billed as Jimmy Snuka's cousin. Uh, both of those legends who have passed away since. But uh, coming into the WWE uh, as a young kid, uh, what was it like to being able to work with these two guys right away? Well, listen, I can tell you this much. I was basic born, you know, when you're born to do something or you're blessed or you have the talent to do it, I had that talent and I was born to become a wrestler. You know, now I didn't know that all this time until it happened there in New York City. But being around those two legends, man, they were not only, they were a teacher to me, you know, and it was an honor for me to wrestle those two and to wrestle with them. You know what I mean? Sure. So yeah. it's like going to work with your colleagues. And that's basically what it is. Every day I was with them, every single day. And not only that, they taught me. And what the best part about it is, if I didn't grow up the way I grew up, where I respect my parents and my, you know, and, and honor my parents, I would have never be where I was at. I didn't get big headed. I listened to them. They, whatever they told me what to do, I did it, you know? But as the, my career took off, what better plays or better people to wrestle than Rowdy Rowdy Piper has been in the bins a whole lot longer than me. It was an honor for me. Until this day, I'm still thankful for the people that's been in my career over the years. You know, wrestling back then was fun. Yeah. You know, it was fun. Now, I don't know if they just took the fun out of it or it's not even... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you mean. Back yep, yep. Then, I, I don't I don't know what it is. I you know, I I really don't when people I don't even watch wrestling no more. I have I don't I don't watch wrestling, I don't follow people would stop me, hey you're the phone that gave me like, yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> oh, you know your cousin Roman Reigns won the belt and I go, He did and this was like three years ago and I'm thinking, <laughs> Oh, he did and they think I'm talking about last night. Man, I, I don't know. I just don't <laughs> it's not fun to me anymore. Sure, but yeah. I can say this Vince McMahon the WWF back then was WWF. Now it's uh -huh. WWE has been good to me and my family. That I can say. And me, my family, the Samoan dynasty, all the way to Peter Maivia, to Dwayne Johnson, the Rock Apasika, my brother Rakishi, me, myself, and I, I can say that because I had three, four different names. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. They were good to us, and we were good to them. Sure. So there's nothing that we can say back. All we say is to give our family and our kids an opportunity and let them do what they do. Because a lot of our kids nowadays that are going, I got grandkids that are four years old I'm training. They already know how to take a bump. <laughs> they know how to take a thrust kick. They already know how to do a Samoan drop before they were even three. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. of course it's in our it's, it's in our bloodline. It's like pit bulls. You know, oh. you ever throw a pit bull in the cage with a Jimmy Shepherd? <laughs> well, it's it's a wrap, man. It's over. It's done. <laughs> you know. Sure. So for you know for me to come back out to the East Coast and I mean I can go on and on with so oh. much stuff, but I got you know I got a documentary coming out. Oh, I'm right. probably gonna have people hate me. People are gonna like me. But, you know, I don't care. They don't pay my bills, so I don't really care about them. You <laughs> of know? Course, yeah. But I do care about my fans. That's who I do care about. And my family. You know, but most of all is my wife and my five kids that I have now. Nice. Now, you know? I, just, I, I just got one more question for you, too, before we go. Uh, you know, besides wrestling, you also starred in one of my favorite wrestling movies back in the 80s, Body Slam. Uh, was that something that kind of fell into your lap, or how did you land on that role? I think I landed in that. I landed in that role because I already had a fugitive with Roddy Roddy Piper. Uh -huh. You know, I already was you know main event all over with Piper, and I was wrestling Piper any anyways at that time. So I think what they wanted to do was what they're doing now. They made it like a Hollywood, right? Right now, uh -huh. so they basically turned the the the, the angle out of a movie. Huh. You know, so yeah. my uncle Apple and Sika, I guess. Uh, uh, Cindy Lauper's manager, Dave Wolf, I guess got a hold of some of the guys and, uh, and, uh, me and Piper was getting into it already. So that's how that ended up becoming the movie. You know, it was a wrestling, 
an angle, then it turned out to become a movie. Huh. And, you know, I really had a lot of fun doing that. You know, movies so much easier, yeah. you know, than it is <laughs> wrestling, you know? It, sure, it really yeah. is, you know? <laughs> so there's nothing I can say about doing that movie because I wish I would have stuck to it. But listen, if there's anybody out there, producer or whoever that is listening that does movies, well, I'm the man to contact, Tonga Kid. <laughs> you can go on my Facebook at TK Fatu. Because I'm ready to explode right now. I'm 50 years old now. I can't do a lot of things that I use. I'm not jumping off no rope. You'd be lucky to get me to jump off the second rope. You know, you wouldn't have to pay me $1 million to jump off that top rope. You know, and people don't see that anymore, you know, especially from me, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Madison Square let me throw this out there before I leave. I want to say again to Rowdy Piper's family. Jimmy Snooker's family, everyone that's been in my life out there over the years of my career and me wrestling, it was an honor for me. And I know they lost their loved one, and I want to say our prayers are out to you and your families. Nothing easy to heal from, you know. Like I said, we just lost a family, too. Mm -hmm. We just lost my cousin Matt, you know, and the list goes on. But we're not trying to kill the Samoan dynasty. We're trying to keep them alive. Mm. You know, and the West Coast, we're going to keep them alive, even in the East Coast. So I'm excited for me and my son just to come out there and to visit, you know, uh, out there in New York City. You know, and my son, Jacob, you know, he's a newcomer, the Samoan werewolf. And um, I, I think he's he's out. He's he's amazing. You know, when you watch him and watch him wrestle, you can go on YouTube and watch him. He's almost just like me, but not as good as me. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, Sam Fatu uh, the Tonga Kid thank you so much for joining us we can't wait to see you uh, on June 10th and 11th with the ESS Promotions everybody listening head on over to ESSPromotions.com and get more information uh, thanks so much and we wish you and your family nothing yes, but the best and, and I want to say one more thing to all the fans don't forget to come out there and get your pictures with the Samoan Dynasty you know and that's all of us you only get us one time it's a one time deal right here it's a one time shot so come get it now because tickets are running out. Tickets are sold out, and you might be standing there for five hours if you don't get them now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, thank you so much, and we wish you nothing but the best. All right. God bless you. God bless you, New York City, New Jersey. Thanks to the Tonga Kid. Make sure you head on over to ESSpromotions.com. Check him out. He'll be in the, the tri-state area very soon. But, guys, uh, a lot of stuff happened in the week. Let's get right into the week that was, shall we? All right, guys. Uh, the Universal Championship has been missing in action ever since WrestleMania this year. Uh, Dave Meltzer, you know, everybody's favorite uh, Dave Meltzer, uh, recently, <laughs> recently stated, you know, now with Braun Strowman uh, being injured, uh, they're going to be discussing in a meeting that I think happened this week uh, about what the hell they're going to do uh, if Strowman can't be ready for to go in July for Great Balls of Fire. Uh, the feeling is that if Braun will only be out for a month, then the Universal title match will not have to be held off. If Strowman is not able to return in time, Finn Balor or Seth Rollins will be placed in his position for Great Balls of Fire. Uh, but Strowman versus Brock <laughs> Lesnar could get pushed back until SummerSlam. <laughs> Guys, the Universal Championship has been losing credibility very fast, and it's almost like, why? Why did we even come up with this new championship just to not have it on TV anymore? And it's like, it's not like, oh, the IC, it's not like the IC championship or the, the WWE championship or something is sitting at home, the tag titles. It's like your brand's main championship is not on every <laughs> week, you know? And it's like, well, come on. I mean, does this bother any of you guys? I mean, Hold the on. guys, are, what are they fighting for? <laughs> Hold on. I know where he's going Hold with on. this. I know where he's going with this. What's the name of that pay-per-view again? Oh God, <laughs> I knew it. GBOF. We're gonna have a... It doesn't doesn't it roll off the tongue. It doesn't no. roll off. Balls of fire. I'm We're talking still about great how... balls fire. Like th- talking about a TV PG product, and we're talking about yeah. great balls of fire. Imagine the five year old dressed like John Cena telling his mom, <laughs> Going to great balls of fire, mom. <laughs> go if we're talking about a title losing fire. credibility, that's where it's going to be defended in great balls of fire. Brock Lesnar if, returns a great balls of fire. If there are no balls on fire that night, I don't know what's going to happen because, like, they, they need to. 
to do something with uh, the credibility of that name that night. I don't know. But yeah. That name screams a VD, and I'm not talking about Vic Delicious. God damn it. (laughs) Universal Championship, guys, it's not going to be seen for months now. Uh, and if, if it doesn't happen then, it's not going to happen until SummerSlam, if that. And that's almost like half the year of no Universal Championship. Just doing what? Like, what's the point now? Okay, Brock, we, we can't write him into the next pay-per-view? Or I mean, come on. Just get it. Like, th- this is why that match did not need the Universal Championship at WrestleMania. Because this right here is that they don't know what to do with it. They don't know they don't have a match for him to defend it or to lose it. And okay, let's say Brock comes back and defends the Universal Championship at Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what so does he win it? Does Braun get it? Like or, I mean, I think in my head the obvious choice would be to get it off of Brock so that it could be on TV every week, right? Oh, you guys are complaining. It's it's been a month since WrestleMania. I mean, Come on, that was a long and hard fought battle against uh, <laughs> against Goldberg. We got to get this guy some rest. What are you talking about, Credo? Do you know how long it takes to recover when you just f five <laughs> a fifty year old man after like a three minute match at WrestleMania? Come on, man, give him a break. You know what? I say we don't have to see Brock Lesnar until next WrestleMania. Oh my gosh. And I'll tell you something. <laughs> oh, if, you, if if that's how it's going to happen, <laughs> the internet community is going to explode. <laughs> They're going to go nuts complaining that Great Balls of Fire isn't going to have Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Brock, I, I saw a funny meme actually the other day. I was, it, it's stupid, but I was laughing hysterically. It was like a, one of those memes with Keanu Reeves looking clueless. And he's like, what if... Brock is missing because he's defending the title across the universe. <laughs> I did see that. Oh my god. It's so stupid, but I found it so funny. <laughs> and I laughed at it for a good 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> That's how fucking much I needed entertainment that day. Uh, but, you know, it, it, okay, so might as well just take this 30 day rule and throw it out the window. I mean, Naomi's probably so mad right now. They, oh, they stripped yeah. her of the title. Because she couldn't defend it in 30 days. Daniel Bryan lost the not just the IC title, but the WWE title because he couldn't defend it within 30 days. But Lesnar wins the title, and I believe we're going on like 34 days right now. I mean, <laughs> well, what's funny about Naomi is that from the time she was stripped of it, was off TV, and then returned to TV. Has been more times than Brock has been on TV. The bit, like she was on in that amount of time than Brock's been off that amount of time. It's like, yeah, exactly. Let's rewrite that point. the rule book, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but this is Brock Lesnar. We're not talking about fucking some uh, beautiful lady with a nice big luscious ass. We're talking about Brock Lesnar. We, we've had this discussion, especially you, Mike. Where in mixed martial arts, you don't see your top top title can, uh, champions. Uh, all every week or every month. You oh know, no, you I see get them that. once every four months. And no, I, I'm I think, not. I, I I'm think, not against it. I, I'm not against it either. That's that's why I laugh at these marks. I'm like, when he comes back and they have something lined up for him proper, you know, I think it's going to go over very well. Because let's be honest, with the exception of the Goldberg angle, whenever Brock's been off of TV and con- and has come back, they've usually had something pretty good for him. Seventy-five percent of the time, let's put it that way. I mean, that's my TV my sports. grievance, my, my yeah. grievance with the whole thing is is the fact that, I, I, yeah, take him off TV. In the meantime, while he's off TV, do something with the guys you have there now. Elevate them, but the way they do things, they don't think correctly. They don't they don't think straight. It's like they just do it and then they just worry about it later, which big juggernaut like the WWE, they need to really put in a lot of thought into what they're doing. Like you have a storyline where somebody lost the title within 30 days, but then Brock is off TV for two months <laughs> yep. with the title and there's no explanation. Like there's nothing. There's no vignettes where Brock is, nothing. We and and that that's what my problem is. I mean keep him off TV if you want, but give give me something as a fan, you know, to no. to suspense my belief into this. Yeah, and and, but, and I want to make mention. I, I don't think it was this week, but I think it was last week, and maybe it was Dean Ambrose that made the comment where we, we have a, 
universal champion that just kind of defends the title whenever he wants. Yep, that was kind of took. It was Dean Ambrose, wasn't it? Yep, and it's like I wonder. I wonder if we got any heat for that because I mean that's not something uh, you really should be saying on television when uh, you're trying to go the route of making an appearance from Lesnar special. I mean, you you know where I'm going with that. Well, I can tell you this: if if he did get heat, I mean, apparently rumor mill has it that he's dropping the title to Miz on Monday. So, well, I think I feel more bad about the guys like Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, to where it's almost like they need to. Okay, yeah, they're going to be fighting for number one contendership and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, two weeks ago they're fighting to be the number one contender for the IC championship, and it's like. Why? Why? What are we doing here? And then every week it's like, what are we fighting for? Because we don't even know when that title is going to be back. And then, okay, let's say if let's just say this week they're fighting for the number one contendership for the Universal Championship. At what point does that kick in to where, okay, now you can go fight for it to where it's putting these top talents in, in limbo to where, man, we're, we're, we're fighting for, for this Universal Championship spot. But when is that spot ever going to happen? And I feel like that's where... Okay, I think I even mentioned it a week ago to where, okay, now would have been a great time to start doing like a King of the Ring to where we could have killed a few weeks and, you know, to build up for that and, and so on and so forth. But now it's like they don't have a good game plan and set in motion to to have like these top guys fighting for anything. And I don't know. That's where I feel bad about just like guys like that to where what are, what are they doing every week, you know? Breaking news, Credo. Great balls of fire. Brock oh Lesnar will be defending the universal title. At Great Balls of Fire, I might add. Goodness uh, gracious. <laughs> anyway, my balls are on fire from talking about this Get so much. Anyway, hey, Brock what, Lesnar what's, coming back. Let, let's, uh, let's think about this now. What, what do you think the official theme song of Great Balls of Fire is going to be? <laughs> if it is not what we're that, very Great Balls of Fire, then I swear uh, that's it. They, I'm, I'm not going to watch. It has to be Great, Great Balls of Fire. Is it Ray Charles like a, sings that or Little Richard? No, you know what they should do? They should get Fozzie to cover the original version of Great Balls of Fire. That's that what I was saying. It's probably going to be a cover, right? <laughs> so it's gonna be a cover. I feel like, I feel like is it, you ever see Pee Wee's Playhouse? You know, you know in Pee Wee's Playhouse when, when like they say the word of the day and it's like, ah, everybody just goes crazy. And that, I feel like with great every time Credo or somebody says Great Balls of Fire, it's just like us just going in on it. Just not necessarily Pee Wee Playhouse style, but just like that's like a code word to just start ripping the pay per view apart. <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis is uh, turning over in his grave right now because of this. But anyway, guys, uh, uh, just to, just to bring it up one more time, I mean, man, it, I think what's what's worse about this is the whole Braun, you know, getting injured, uh, and you know now they don't really have a ma- opponent for him, so. It, it's just throwing more things into limbo, and I don't know. Who knows when the next time we shall see that Universal Championship. I'm not going to say it, but... Uh, Great balls of fire. <laughs> uh, but guys, uh, they they did just release uh, this week, too. The, the WWE Women's Tournament is going to be held during the third quarter of this year. Uh, PW Insider is reporting that WWE will start taping the tournament on July 13th and 14th at Full Sail University. The current plan is to hold the finals of the tournament as a live WWE Network special on Tuesday, August 29th. Uh, guys, women's tournament. I mean, we had the Cruiserweight Classic last year. That was great. We had the UK Championship uh, Tournament earlier this year. Now we're getting a women's tournament. Um, are we going to have, and I, I know they really haven't specifically said, but are we going to get the women that are in the WWE right now? Or are we also just going to do like a Cruiserweight? Uh, or maybe, I don't know, what do you guys want to see out of this tournament? Should we get some fresh faces in this tournament? Or, you know, or what? Or who, what are they fighting for? Are they fighting for a spot on the roster? Are they going to fight for the women's championship? Uh, I'm kind of curious how this is all going to unfold. Because the Cruiserweight tournament and the UK tournament was for, you know, the winner got the new Cruiserweight championship, then the new UK championship. It's not like they, ha- they, they already have three women's belts in uh, NXT or SmackDown Raw. So what do you guys want to see out of this tournament? You know what's interesting is uh, you said this is getting taped in full sale on the 14th, correct? Uh, July 13th and 14th, yes. And then they're uh, going to have uh, the live, you know, air it live for the finals on August 29th. So they'll probably span it out the next few weeks from July. You do realize that's four days after Great Balls of Fire, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to go there. I don't know what to expect because I don't know if they're going to use women from 
the main roster in this tournament? Or are they going to throw a couple of the NXT ladies in there? Are we going to get more indie talent? Are they going to be fighting for a spot? I think it would be absolutely great if they took the best from the indies, put them up against the best uh, ladies from from the main roster, and threw some of the NXT talent in there, you know, just for the goof. Yeah. I mean, they've got some uh, really great talent right now in NXT. You know, my boo, Nikki Cross, had me laughing my ass off on NXT with her little promo skit this week, so... Check that shit out, but uh, I mean, uh, I don't know what to expect. I don't know who's it, in it. Well, you, it, it's almost like you just say NXT too. It's almost like the NXT has more talent down there right now than they do on the main roster. Uh, to where you know Nikki Cross, Candice LeRae is down there, uh, Kimberly. Uh, you know, I definitely want to see a lot of those girls mix mix in with this. And I, you know, some of the, some of the girls on the indie scene. You know, Deanna Perazzo, a uh, local girl over here from New Jersey. Uh, she's been all over the place from NXT to TNA and all that, but you know, I would lo- Man- Mandy Leon. Uh, you know, I wonder if some of these girls from Ring of Honor could get on there. You know, it's going to be interesting to see who they handpick and choose. But I definitely don't want to see like Charlotte winning the tournament, or you know, it has to be some up and comer. It has to be somebody who's making a name, right? Yeah, they're gonna. From what I read, they're they're gonna be bringing in a couple people from NXT. They're gonna bring in a lot of like girls from the Indies and. Allegedly, the winner gets the number one contendership against uh, Asuka. That, that's where mm. they are going with it from what I read. Can't really believe everything you read on the internet, but that, that's what I read, which makes the most sense right now, the way to do it. Asuka, um, the one, a bit, bigger streak than Goldberg right now. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, it's funny, they don't even talk about that. <laughs> No, and and it makes you feel bad for somebody like Ember Moon, who was basically in line to take that belt off her. Now we got to – how long is she going to be out for? She's um, only out for four to six weeks. But even still, now you have to throw her in that. If, if she wins that tournament, well, I, I might put a gun on my mouth. I'm just saying. Well, <laughs> they could still have the Amber Moon versus Asuka match at the SummerSlam weekend. I mean they're not doing the finals till after SummerSlam. Hmm. True. True. So that could still happen. I mean, she's only gone for four to six weeks, I believe, which did, unfortunately misses NXT Chicago. But she'll be back. She'll be good to go. But yeah, I'm that, not a, that's I'm not a fan going. of her. I'm not a fan of her. You know, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I, me either. I mean, I'm trying to get to know this character. I'm trying to understand it, but I just, she's not really doing much for me. Yes, exactly what I wanted to say. I think she could still work out some stuff. I love her finisher, but. I think her finisher looks great. I, I do like her finisher. It just that the character, it just not. It's not really doing anything for me. It really, it, yeah. it really isn't. And she that's not me taking away. Yeah, it's not me taking away like any credibility from her because she can work. Just I don't know. I'm me personally. I'm not clicking with her. All right, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, who are they going to bring in? Girls from the outside, girls from other countries, wrestlers. Uh, are they going to use their own the main roster girls or the NXT girls? Uh, but you know it's going to be interesting to start seeing the next few months what girls aren't signing anymore with TNA or Ring of Honor or mm. who who actually you know gets the the chance to you know go over there. Will Ring of Honor let girls go wrestle on there? Because hell, you know if they if they were still signed with Ring of Honor and you're going to go let them wrestle on WWE TV, that boosts your stock I think a little bit to where okay that girl comes back to Ring of Honor how many people just saw her on TV kind of makes them more popular. So it's almost a good idea to have ring of honor girls, the women of honor to kind of to go into this tournament to where, okay, if you're going into this tournament, knowing that you're not signed, it's just more, you know, it boosts their appeal to other people who may not know them in ring of honor. You know what I mean? But uh, that's, what's going to be interesting because you even have a uh, girls like uh, from TNA, you know, is velvet. I don't even watch TNA, but is velvet sky on TNA or is she, what's she doing? I mean, that could be an opportunity to bring in Velvet Sky to see what she could do as like an outside girl. I mean, Bully Ray has some pull in the WWE. I'm sure maybe he could get her in that. You know, uh, she really hasn't been doing much, but you know, just like another name to throw out there. Uh, you know, to where hey, this could be the time where Velvet Sky joins the WWE. I don't know. There's there's little how things about, like that. You know, how about Paige? Can we put Paige in the tournament? <laughs> how about her mom? Probably put it more worth it to her mom. That's <laughs> a great night. Oh, that'd be great. But is there anybody I don't know, anybody from TNA or Women of Honor, Women of Honor, or just anywhere? I mean, a favorite of mine too is Christina Von Erie, but she's kind of, which is, 
what's going on with Global Force Wrestling and TNA right now. Yeah, I would have loved to see her in that kind of a tournament. But you know, once again, I who knows what kind of contracts they're locked into or what. I hope they put Tessa Blanchard in there. This Pretty girl is too. absolutely gorgeous. She's beautiful, but she can work. Yes. Well, once again, let us know what you uh, out there want to see. Tweet us at a wrestling pod. Facebook us. Just go to anotherwrestlingpodcast dot com. It's twenty seventeen. You uh, you know what to do with the links, right? That's right. And Nikki Cross, get me in those DMs, girl. Holla at me. Let's talk about the musty matches of the week. We'll call it the Angry Cooter mixtape. I watch four shows. That's all I have time for, but that's still a lot of TV. So for Raw, match of the night, I have to give it to Samoa Joe and Seth Rollins. And I'm throwing out an honorable mention this week to the club versus Cesaro and Sheamus during the oh tag team turmoil match for the number one contendership. That was probably my the, the best part of the match for me. The rest of it I could have done without. But uh, SmackDown, obviously, we're going to go with six-man tag. Kevin Owens... Jinder Mahal, Jinder, not Ginger, Mike, and uh, <laughs> oh god, and Baron Corbin versus Randy Orton, Sami Zayn, and AJ Styles, 205 Live. I can't believe I'm giving the nod to Mustafa Ali and Tony Nice. Probably the match of the night. Uh, another honorable mention. There is only two matches this week on 205 Live, but you could have made the argument for Akira Tozawa versus Brian Kendrick. Just when you think this rivalry gets stale, they do something to really make it fresh again. I, I like to see a, a conclusion to this. I think we're going to have one final blow-off match. And then maybe these guys can go do some uh, different programs. But last but not least, if you didn't see it, this is probably the match of the week for me. The number one contendership for the NXT title it was Hideo Itami versus Roddy Strong. My God, please do yourself a favor. Just watch this match. If you watch nothing else for the rest of the fucking week, just watch this match. And I absolutely love that match. It's amazing. Love it. That's your Angry Cooter mixtape. Uh, let me uh, ask you guys uh, your opinions on, on my picks for, uh, for, for the week. Credo, agree, disagree? Cooter, man, I- I'm still stuck in the world of... Uh... Uh, <laughs> watching kid shows most of the time. I, I miss 205 Live a lot. Uh, you know, it, it, what sucks, because I was so... And hear me out, because I was so for Cruiserweights. I love watching Cruiserweights. What throws me away from the Cruiserweights, just watch it. Like, I mean, the, the show and stuff to where they gave them storylines, man. So I just want to watch Cruiserweights wrestle. I don't want to see them involved in storylines. I just want to see them go out there, do what they do, and that's it. When they start, like, giving them stories to do, I'm like, ugh, save that for the other shows. And that's where I, that's why I never tune in, man. And so, like, right there, I can't even agree on that because I don't watch it because I'm just turned off by it. I know I have to sit down and just watch it and shut up, but still, that's where I, I can't agree with you on that because I, I still have yet to, to sit down and watch them. So that's my fault. And, and, I, and I can agree with you on that because that's the one thing that WCW did right where they just let these guys go in the ring with very minor, minor storylines where, you know, this WWE version, we're getting, you know, heavily scripted storylines where it was, all right, you talk shit about this guy and have a match. Enjoy on Nitro. Clone, what are your thoughts? You know, I really... The one thing that I really liked about 205 Live this week was the fact that it was in front of a crowd that actually appreciated them. Yes, I saw they that. They're in the UK, and the UK fans are just so passionate fans, and they appreciate the wrestling, unlike the American fans that aren't really... And, 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 and I can't really put all the blame on the American fans because it is creative, too. These guys are just, like you said, are thrown out there with these horrible storylines that it's hard for them to grasp it. But the fans in the UK kind of just like put the storyline to the back burner and just appreciated the wrestling. And they were behind it 110%. And it made 205 Live so much better to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't a fan of the, the six-man tag match on SmackDown. I didn't think SmackDown was a great show this week, in my opinion. Raw was, was raw. As, as, as you Atrocious. and Ole Anderson like to say, was the, the drizzling, drizzling shits. It was so bad bad so bad i'm i'm so confused with how they're booking things right now i really am i don't even think they know how they're booking things 
it's it's crazy it really is and i'm not gonna get on that um nxt was for me the best show this week yeah absolutely but hands down i mean i really like what they're doing alistair black they're creating him into a beast they're building him up and rumor has it that vince mcmahon and the guys in the main roster are so heavy on alistair black right now that alistair might not even be on the on nxt for that much longer he might be getting moved up pretty soon wow Uh, yeah they haven't put him in any like storylines down there he's just demolishing people which honestly that's the right way to build somebody like just let him demolish people for a little bit before you throw him in a storyline but he went on tour with the raw brand in the uk and he's got nothing but praised by his in-ring ability his entrance in the big stage looks amazing from what i've heard and vince just loves this guy he really does so Rumor has it that he's going to be on the main roster sooner than most people. So, I, I mean, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with him. And, Credo, let me tell you, man, to your point, you know, Raw was so atrocious. And I think as much as I like Brock Lesnar not being on TV, it just seems that creative is in this really bad holding pattern. And they don't know what to do because of it. Yeah. And it's it's just all creative's fault right now for, for Raw. You have the top talent and you just don't know what to fucking do with it because <laughs> Brock Lesnar is recovering from F5ing a 50-year-old man. <laughs> this week outside the WB, there's not really much going on. I mean, you had Ring of Honor and New Japan. They're on day three in my terms of talking and by the time you listen to this podcast they'll probably be on day four uh their uh their war of the worlds tour which has been getting nothing but good reviews so if if you have a chance to go out of your way and watch these matches i suggest you do moving on to evolve evolve 85 is happening in may 20th a couple hours before nxt chicago and some of the key matches you want to look out for, you got Matt Riddle is going to be defending his WNN title. Or, I'm sorry. Matt Riddle is going to be defending his WWN championship title against Kyle O'Reilly, which is probably going to be an amazing match. Evolve champion Zack Sabre Jr. defending against Ethan Page. And we're going to get a rematch of the big men. That's Keith Lee versus Donovan Dijak is happening on that card as well. So that's Ooh, going to be good. It's all happening on Flow Slam. People that are listening, and I I stress this so much, if you're a wrestling fan and 20 bucks, if you're okay with spending 20 bucks a month, do it. Seriously. If if you love wrestling that much and you love to see stuff outside WB, spend the 20 bucks. You get House of Hardcore, you get Shine, you get two Evolve pay-per-views a month. Plus, you get all these amazing documentaries. They they just did a documentary which released yesterday. I, I watched it last night. It was great. It was called All Access Behind More Than Mania, which they had just had cameras following the guys throughout WrestleMania week. I mean, they had uh, cameras behind Joey Janela's Spring Break, which, by the way, I, I thought was an interesting card with it, what they did. It was very interesting. They took guys from the past and put them up against guys from the future. I mean, you had Matt Riddle versus Dan the Beast, Beast Severin. You oh, had wow. Joey, Joey Janela versus Marty Janetti. You know, I mean, Glacier made an appearance, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Glacier made an appearance, which was very, like, they went nuts when Glacier came out. That was the biggest pop that Glacier ever got in his career <laughs> when he came out. So oh, spend wow. the extra money. And then you got... You got high spots too. It's it's ten bucks a month, and you get to watch all your NEW. You get to watch PWG, which PWG is very very exclusive. PWG is something that I, I'm actually going to attempt to take a trip to Reseda, California this summer to catch a PWG show because you ain't gonna watch it on any other program live. You can only watch it literally live. When you're there or buy the DVDs or if you pay the ten ninety nine for high spots. That's the only way you're going to watch PWG. They're so exclusive. So I'm going to attempt to make a trip across country to watch one of their events this summer. So it should be, should be a good time. It really should. Today's show is brought to you by... This is your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle. And you're listening to another wrestling podcast in association with Celeb VM. Order a personal video message from me... 
and many other wrestlers and celebrities now. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Get a personal video message for yourself or as a gift for someone else. For personal connections, shout-outs, birthdays, proposals, weddings, and much more. Enter your details about yourself so the celebrity can record a personal video message, especially for you, including details such as your name, age, birthday, hobbies, or whatever else you include. As soon as the video has been recorded, you'll get an email with your link so you can share it on social media or download and keep it. Celebrities record videos as and when they can, usually within two weeks. But if you want a video for a specific date and it does not look like it will arrive in time, you can cancel it and get an instant refund at the click of a button. There are hundreds of celebrities to choose from and many more joining every day. Search by category or genre. Buy a gift voucher, get updates and offers, and encourage your favorite celebrities to join so they can connect with fans in a fun and unique way. Raise money for their charities and much more. So order your video now for yourself or for someone else. Celebrity Video Messages and Another Wrestling Podcast team up. Be sure to head on over to celebvm.com slash AWP. Promo of the Week. Iron Sheik, Sheik Alahani, Cosmo Vasari. I'm very curious. Where is your coach this week? What are you talking about? Fred Blassie. Well, don't worry about the Fred Blassie. Let's see, he's partying, holiday parties. For, for holiday party in Palace. You know he's an intelligent American like yourself, intelligent, intelligent Jew, whatever you want to call you. Fred Blassie now is a shopping because the man is American. He respect is the uh, Christmas time, whatever. For this season, Mr. Blassie is not here. But remember, myself, I'm here. Nikola Volkov is here. Thank you very much. I mean, anytime you bring us to this country, talk about the Sheikh background and Nikola Volkov background, you remember I was the first Iranian human being come to the America, be a special Big Apple, a special toughest, roughest area, WW. And I come from A to the Z. You know what I'm talking about. The first human being beat that how to do the I come all the world champion and then that idiot Hulk Hogan 1983 double cross me and take my belt. But remember, Mr. Hogan, it doesn't matter. It was 1983. It doesn't matter. They're going to be 1986 again. Maybe you never know. What All right. Ask me? Well, I wanted to ask about uh, Brutus Beefcake and Greg the Hammer Valentine. They are the current title holders. And certainly Nikolai Volkov and yourself would like to recapture the tag team. I respect your intelligence. I forgot about that belt we had it. And I'm American double crosses again. I respect you, Jim. Man, you are intelligent Jew businessman. We're going to find out. I can't wait to that Iranian hand. Get to that Bruce's beef key or all American boy from wrestling family, Greg Valentine. The We're hammer. Gonna, the hammer, whatever. We're going to find out who is the real champion. Is. Right Thank you very much, gentlemen. What's that smell? <laughs> Movies and pro wrestling, what, what better mix than that I mean uh, as Marks as fans we love pro wrestling and we love movies so I mean it, it all goes together guys uh, we, we talked earlier about you know some of the wrestlers some of the stars right now uh, being big movie stars uh, we talked to a guy who's in Body Slam the Tunga Kid Sam Fatu uh, now let's talk about some movies I mean uh, guys some of our favorites some of uh, maybe your least favorites just anything let's just get right into this I mean you know, growing up, I remember as a little kid watching Body Slam. Uh, I, you know, I, I knew what wrestling was. I knew some of the wrestlers in it, and I, I knew F Face from the A Team was in it. So that's why I was watching it because I recognized them from the A Team. But uh, other, you <laughs> know what I mean? So I was the like, A Team. So right there, it had me. Uh, but you know, I remember watching it over and over. Um, and then you know, like other movies from the '80s that came out, uh, No Holds Barred was awesome. Uh, we just played that right there, right? 
Uh, but another one, a big one too, you know, Suburban Commando. I remember these movies just growing up, and it was weird because it tied into just wrestling from Hulk Hogan. I mean, Hulk Hogan was that star back then. He was the the actor for all these movies in the 80s, if you will. Uh, you know, he even had a spot in uh, Rocky Three as Thunderlips. So, I mean, Hogan was the man for, for the movies back then, right? Uh, you know what? I was never really a fan of anything Hogan was in. Nothing. I'm serious. <laughs> it, they were all so bad. I mean, even as a little most, angry most, cooter, you didn't like it. No, no. The only movie I liked with Hogan in it was was No Holds Barred. It was only because of that line. It was just <laughs> so funny, like Hulk Hogan walking around doing that stupid little hand gesture, going rip him. Like sh- shit was fucking trash. <laughs> Terrible. All right. You didn't like no. Debo. Oh, get the fuck out of here, man. I mean, Vince McMahon liked him so much. He invented SummerSlam. Oh, Uh, my God. That's what's crazy about it, too, to where, like, that movie made that guy such a big, you know, star that they actually turned into, or they turned him into a wrestler for a few shows, so. I, I remember, I remember this, actually, when I was a kid. What they did with this is WWE, they did the debut of the movie, on pay-per-view and then right yes. after the movie they had the match it wasn't SummerSlam they they had the movie and then they had the match which was Hogan who is Hogan's partner so it was Brutus the Macho King is, uh, was it Brutus Beefcake yes thanks so. yeah it might have been it was Hogan and Beefcake versus Savage and Zeus and Zeus yeah and they they were the main event right after the movie Mm. Um, which was, which was a horrible match. I mean, Zeus so he only has. I don't know who has more limited move sets, him or the Great Khali. I'm gonna tell you right now. I think Tiny Lister probably had a better acting career than Hulk Hogan. That's just a fact. <laughs> I mean, he was in The Dark Knight. He was in all the fucking Friday movies. He's had appearances you know, as brief as they were. And way better movies than Hogan could ever wish to be in outside of. He was Rocky. only a supporting character, though. He was never a lead character. Oh, who cares? That's not even a point. I do want to remind everybody, though, uh, if if you haven't heard of Tiny Zeus Lister, uh, Zeus, go back to episode nineteen of another wrestling podcast. Oh, that's one of my favorites, Greedo. Oh my <laughs> gosh, man! So we, it was barely an interview because it was like. I, I talked to him. I knew his agent. I talked to him. I was like, yo, listen, Cena just called him out because they're re- they were what, re-releasing the No Holds Barred movie on Raw. Mm-hmm. And C- Cena calls him out like for a match. I was like, ooh, let me try to find to see if we can get him. We played it for him, and the dude was lit. Like, he would just want to call him out. He wanted a match at Mania. I think we'd said, like, three questions out of the whole entire interview, and he just pretty much talked about it, reminding us he's from the hood. Uh, that he would, you know, pretty much mess John Cena <laughs> up, and it was it was intimidating, even over the phone. You know, I was like, okay, I'm sorry, sir. You know, like, what the fuck am we gonna say to Zeus over here, who's like threatening to take out John Cena because he's from the hood? But anyway, you episode saw what he 19. did in the movie Friday. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah, he <laughs> stole the guy's bike, took his necklace. <laughs> Yeah, man. Problem, dude. dude is fucking scary, but man, yeah. You know, uh, just remembering the, the 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 movies as kids. Now, uh, even fast forward, I remember in the '90s, man, Ready to Rumble. Ugh, I loved it, and you know, it's such a fun movie to watch even to this day. Just for, just to see some of the guys in there who are like, well, a lot of guys in there are actually passed away. I mean, Bam Bam Bigelow's in the background. Uh, there's just a lot of guys in that movie that it's like. Wow, it's anybody and everybody of WCW at that time. And I'm, I'm kind of upset that WWE didn't go that route of having a movie like this where they use their own wrestlers. Man, WCW was so smart at that time. That movie is absolute horseshit, trash, doo-doo. <laughs> but I love it. Stop. I love it. It's another, it's another fucking movie that made its way onto the fucking wrestling television show when we had that Fuck boy, David Arquette winning the WCW title. The, 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 this crossover. Oh stuff, yeah, I know that. That was that I, was I the worst part about that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and it's, just, it's I can't I can't do it. There, for me, there's really only one movie that I can say had a wrestler in it as a lead character that I really did enjoy, and it's probably to this day still one of my all time favorites. Rowdy Roddy Piper in They Live, John Carpenter's They Live. That is such a great movie because. I, I used to catch it. It used to be on WPIX Channel 11 
They used to play it every October. Uh, I, I couldn't wait for it. You know, it was like every October I could finally, because my parents would never let me go to the video store and rent that shit because it was rated R. You know, my, <laughs> my mom's a fucking bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, that being said, you know, you had to watch the scent. I just love that movie so much. I mean, it had such a classic lines in it. I have come here to chew gum, bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. And he just starts blowing people's heads off in a bank. What's more gangster than that? Zeus couldn't do that shit. Well, I'm going to go back to Ready to Rumble. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't talk about that piece of shit movie <laughs> anymore. Bow down no, to the king, baby. And, and pop quiz, guys. There's one wrestler in this movie that not many people knew was in this movie that is a big-time WWE star. Can you guys guess who it was? Ooh. Uh, I know Diamond Dallas Page is. I mean, like currently, right now. Currently, yes. Wow. Uh, I'm just gonna know. tell you. Yeah, it's John me. Cena. John no. Cena. John Cena was in the gym working out in that scene when they went to oh. go talk to Goldberg. If you look in the background, wow. he's pumping iron with the blonde hair as the prototype. Wow. I'll have to check that out. We're gonna get a screen grab of that. Right in the back. Wow. <laughs> Another reason to not watch Ready to Rumble, John Cena. Listen, I go. liked Ready <laughs> to Rumble, okay? It was so it was so it's bad that I actually such enjoyed Such a loser. It. Oh my god. I loved it. I'm surprised, you know, with, with WWE films today, like they're making the Marine and whatever all these other kind of movies. I I would wish it would, it would be so cool if they would use the wrestlers for movies like this where it's like a movie about wrestling maybe or something like that or you know CM Punk had that one good idea uh, that old 80s movie Cannonball Run he, he said if they ever made a movie they would, when he was wrestling to be in he would love for like them to all be in like a Cannonball Run kind of a movie where we're all trying to race across America to win stuff like stuff like that like I can't believe they don't make fun movies like that they're all trying to make some serious Hollywood blockbusters just make some fun movies like that I mean uh, did you guys I ha- I never saw Nacho Libre when it came out in the theaters and oh I put my it God. off for so long put it off for so long and then I finally just sat down and watched it on Netflix one night it was one of my favorite wrestling movies of all time I couldn't believe how stupid and good and just dumb it was and I loved it I was like why did I not know about this like years ago Oh god, I've never seen that myself. I, I, and I've always heard good things about it. Nacho Libre. It's it's, it's it has chant. like a dry sense of humor, but it's I don't know. I thought it was hilarious. It's it's a good Netflix movie to pull up, or it's, I'm sure it's everywhere though right now. So it's funny you you mentioned uh, a Lucha Libre style movie because there is a horror movie out there. It's called The WrestleManiac, and it's so. Bad. I think it was like in 2006 this fucking thing came out. Where yeah, basically the the fucking the killer of the movie is this masked lucha libre fucking uh, murderer. It's just fucking terrible. I mean, I must have fallen asleep during this thing like three or four times. It's really bad. So uh, it's probably on Netflix because it's that bad. Um, Cologne probably has it on his DVD shelf. Right next to Ready to Rumble, you fucking. I've loser. never heard it, but I <laughs> never heard it, but I, I have Ready to Rumble on DVD somewhere in my DVD collection. Uh huh. I'm sure you Hell do. Yeah. Well, I got it on Blu-ray. <laughs> not yet, but I will not. Now that you bring it up, I'm gonna get Blu-ray. I'm gonna buy it on Blu-ray just to piss you off. Don't bait. You waste your motherfucking money. It ain't my problem. I'm buy it for you. <laughs> it's gonna be your present every birthday. You're just gonna buy you ready to rumble to actually. Oh, and you give it back it. to me. I'm just gonna re-gift it. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, now fast forward a few years now too. Uh, you know, uh, the wrestler. I loved it. You know, Mickey Rourke. Uh, it, it was great because it was like showing you know the reality of being that pro wrestler. It wasn't you know campy or whatever. It was like a serious movie. Uh, it was like almost like a documentary style, if you will. But it was, you know, uh, it was an awesome movie. You know, kind of like went into the life of being a pro wrestler for so long, and you know, the the life of one. And uh, I love that movie. Did you guys like the wrestler when it came out? Of course, of course. you get to see Marissa Tomei's titties. I think, right? <laughs> well, that's an A plus for any Kuda movie. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. No, no, but in all honesty, the story is great. You know, the uh, it's one thing we don't get to really see is really you know the other side of the business where you know a guy who was on top of the world you know is, is now oh god 
just making appearances and doing shitty matches for for indies and stuff. I mean, you could have been the world's biggest star, and now look what you're doing. I mean, guys like that who come to mind, and and, and don't get me wrong, because I love him to death, anybody who knows me, you know, it's the Iron Sheik. I mean, he's a classic example of that exact story, you know? Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that movie. That was by far my all-time favorite wrestling movie. It just, just like you said, it just goes behind the scenes of what it, what the life is like after being a big time wrestler. And I think because of that movie, it motivated WB to start Legends contracts with guys. Yeah. That if if you pretty much had a good tenure with the company, that you're going to get residuals, which is well deserved. That you get signed to a Legends contract where you just do appearances for them here and there, this and that, and they take care of you. They they help you out with rehab and all that stuff. I, and I feel like the movie The Wrestler was is what helped influence WWE to do that. Now uh, it was by far the, the best movie. I, I loved how it ended, where it's like you don't know if he died in the ring. It just yeah. cuts to black, and it, it was very a very good movie. And it's like Hooter said, you got to see some titties. Yes, the power of Marissa Tomei's titties and what they did to change the landscape of WWE. God bless those titties. Ugh. <laughs> Way better well, than Charlotte's, I might add. Just but it, it, was just, it was so good because you just felt so bad for this guy. Like You're sitting yeah. there watching and you really just – you wanted to help this guy, but you can't because it's a movie. But that, that's how good it was. It, it just it dra- dragged you right into it. If you had to remake a movie, or if you could have a movie where it starred several wrestlers, doesn't matter from who, where, where WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, whatever, doesn't matter, wrestlers, uh, what genre or what movie out there, is there something that rings a bell in your head when I say that, to, is there a movie that you'd want to be remade with like a lot of wrestlers, almost like the Ready to Rumble, where you had like you know appearances from wrestlers? Uh, anything. It, it, what would you guys? What movie? What kind of movie? What would you guys want to see starring wrestlers? Ooh, that's an interesting question. I got one. I well, I, I think I don't know what the movie, but I, I think if I if I had to write a screenplay for a movie based on wrestling, I would I would make a movie based on coming through the indie scenes, getting to developmental. And then getting that big shot of getting moved up to the main roster. And then where you get to see the behind the scenes stuff, like, you know, at the performance center, when they're telling you the, the big news that you finally are getting called up, you're going to debuting, like, stuff like that. I, w- I would do something like that. I would kind of make it into like a, like one of those like comedy, like drama type movies. I, w- I would do uh-huh. something along the lines like that. Uh-huh. Who I'd have star in it, I'd have to think about that. I got a good one. And it's only because I think of the foul language in this movie, and I think that there is somebody out there who is perfect for it now. Oddly enough, they've actually done a movie together. I would remake Die Hard. I know that's (laughs) sacrilegious, but just for the argument, let's make The Rock John McClane, because he can (laughs) curse like Bruce Willis. His motherfucker is just as good as Bruce Willis' motherfucker. <laughs> and I think him and, like, the original one in Nakatomi Towers, you know, through the elevators, it, it, just the whole nine yards, I think he would be perfect for that role. And I think he should slim down for it and not be a jacked-up monster. Yeah. I think the best motherfucker in Hollywood is Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, yeah, you know, but I think Bruce... <laughs> Yeah, Bruce Willis is up there, though. I mean... No, but Samuel L. Jackson says that word in every fucking movie he's in. Except for Star Wars. Go, go to YouTube. <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he let one out in Star Wars. In, like the deleted scenes. Or something. Deleted scenes. He's like, hey, yo, what go the fuck you do, a motherfucker? You want a good laugh, Cooter? Go to mm-hmm. YouTube, type in Samuel L. Jackson, motherfucker. And it plays all the motherfuckers that Samuel L. Jackson says in every single movie. And it is by far the funniest video. If you well, sit there it, laughing. Speaking of all the dads out there, Google Samuel L. Jackson, go to fuck to sleep. That's a good one for kids. A be- nice bedtime story. It's really good. I, I recommend <laughs> I've it. seen that one, too. Well, will you, but, uh, but we'll, we'll get back on track to where, you know what? I, I'll tell you what. It, with the whole superhero thing going on, Marvel, DC... 
I'm surprised WWE won't even make their own superhero movie, man. Like, use their characters' abilities, almost like that uh, game they have on the phone, you know, uh, whatever the fuck it's called, where it's like the wrestlers have superhuman powers or whatever. Hell, man, get into the superhero genre, make your wrestlers superheroes and villains and whatnot, and boom. You got a franchise right there. You could use your wrestlers in all these kind of movies, and, uh, you know, you got your Super Cena's, and then you can have oh, your I villains, so... Oh, God. I don't know. That'd work good. How about how about we bring back Tales from the Crypt and we let The Undertaker be the Crypt Keeper? Oh, <laughs> Let's save that, that spot for, for the Nature Boy, because his face is going <laughs> the same way. <laughs> the dude. I would actually save that spot for Charlotte's tits. <laughs> and you better. can't top <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I just want to thank this hacker who saved us yes. because he gave us these Charlotte nudes, right? And I guess he realized, damn, I fucked up because I, <laughs> I leaked out these these nasty-ass nudes. I got to make it up for myself. I got to do good. So somehow he did some, he did some digging in the iClouds, mm-hmm. right? And he pulled out good old... Uh, what the fuck is her name again? Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. How could I forget the name? With this just <laughs> amazing, perfect A plus. You have to you, you model this, them after this. This lady had ninety one pictures, and I looked through every single one of them. <laughs> yes, because they were amazing. And <laughs> when I got the picture ten, I completely forgot about Charlotte. Yeah. So, <laughs> Thank you. I salute you. Not just Victoria. I salute the doctor. Can we say something else about Victoria? Hold on. I salute the doctor that put those beautiful tits on Thank her. You. And I salute the hacker because you just you, – you, you got some brownie points with me. You made up. You made good. Now give me something good next week. Like give me like Sasha Banks or somebody. And... <laughs> All I hear is the tales from the crypt. His laugh. And now every time I hear that <laughs> laugh, I'm going to associate that with Charlotte photos. <laughs> Shut oh, up. God. Oh, shit, they live is on. Turn that movie off, it's rated R. Ma, I'm, I'm 34 years old. I don't give a fuck. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Oh, Mom. And I'm all out of bubblegum. 